I have been doing this job for the better part of 10 years. I have gone to a ton of places, and I've met just about everybody, and I think this is the most nervous I have ever been on my show because I am talking to the one, the only, the nature boy, Ric Flair. But nothing to be nervous about, man. Let's have a good time. I kid you not. I posted on my Facebook yesterday that I was going to talk to Ric Flair, and I must have got about 100 people just liking it and commenting. Like, you're talking to the Ric Flair. I said, I know. It's, it's finally paid <laughs> off. All these years of school and going and working, it paid off. Well, good deal, man. How you doing? Uh, so I'm doing good. I'm a little. Look, I just talked to Ricky Steamboat. He had nothing but positive things to say about you. We're going to get into that. You're coming to town July 23rd for a Q&A session. He was telling me this is the first time you guys ever done something like this. It is. Now, he said he had a little and, bit. And by the way, what are the choice would he have with to say about good things about me? The hell? <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me that he has a little bit of butterflies going into this. Now, I don't imagine you get butterflies too much anymore. No, but I, 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 <laughs> I, lo- I love Ricky Steamboat. He's one of the greatest of all time. He's just now, class guy, class act, phenomenal performer, phenomenal athlete, and above all, a class guy. So. I have, I've read your book. I've listened to just about every interview with you, the movies, the documentaries, and I find myself living my life how you told everybody you lived your life in the 80s in the fact that you would spend money you didn't have, but you had to make everybody else just believe that you were this superstar, a bigger superstar than kind of what you were. Yeah, it's called image enhancement. Yeah, it didn't th- always <laughs> work. But <laughs> My wife isn't crazy about my quote-unquote image enhancement, but I, yeah. that, I tell her, I said, listen, Ric Flair did it. And she goes, you're not Ric Flair. Just stop, please. <laughs> I don't. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not a, I'm, not a favor. I'm not a household favorite with all the wives. <laughs> no. But, I mean, and, and but we were, me and my buddies, we would get in trouble at the bar because we, we just start yeah. yelling, my shoes cost more than your house. More than your house. <laughs> we, we just find so many quotes, and we just find ourselves constantly getting in trouble. And people that aren't wrestling yeah. fans... Just think we're the worst people in the world. (laughs) Well, I had a lot of fun. I can't deny that. And in some cases, a $1,500 pair of shoes or $2,000 does cost more than someone's house. (laughs) (laughs) It sure does. Ric Flair, a a lot of questions have been asked over the years. So I try and ask some questions that maybe not everybody has asked you. So let's start with uh, what kind of genre of music are you into? Are you a country fan? Are you kind of a rock and roll fan, kind of in the middle? Where are you at? I'm a Bob Seger, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Kid Rock, and country. So, Hank Williams Jr. So you like I some like of the rock and roll? Yeah, I like the old time rock and roll. Yeah, but I, I like a lot of the country music too. And you but know, yeah, if I had to pick a favorite, it'd be Bob Seger or Kid Rock. So, and a lot of people know that's where you got the woo from was. Um, Jerry, Jerry Lewis. Lee. Yes, where he said Jerry. woo in a song, and you just kind of started Lee stealing Lewis. it. Recognize the gracious great ball of the fire. Woo! See, it's funny because Ricky Steamboat said he stole the arm drag from, uh, I said I think he said Briscoe, and here you stole the woo from Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, no, yeah but I tell you what, I love Jack Briscoe, but Steamboat got it down better. I, that's, <laughs> <laughs> well, I asked him, I said, who does it better than you? And he said, nobody yet. Yeah, nobody. So, nobody close. I think the only person that's got that figure four close to you is your daughter, Charlotte, who's tearing up the WWE. Oh, she, she has surpassed me long ago. It's not the figure four anymore. It's the figure fig, eight. Figure eight, because <laughs> she puts the arc on it. Yeah. And as you say, it's much. It, reversing the figure four doesn't really do anything. I don't know if you can even reverse that figure eight. No, you can't. And, then, <laughs> and, and, and it's, you're not going to see it anytime soon. <laughs> your years of wrestling have expanded. You've had a lot of great memories. What's something somebody... A lot of people may not know about Ric Flair. Whoa, man. I don't know. My life's an open book. I'm not sure. Um, I figured this was going to be a tough one because almost everything about you is out there. Yeah. I don't know what someone doesn't know about me. I mean, (laughs) uh, I I guess today I would have a hard time believing how shy I am. You're a shy guy. I I have a hard time (laughs) believing that. Yeah, I have a hard time (laughs) believing that as well. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny because I, I don't like talking in front of people I don't know. And people tell me all the time, say, well, you're in radio. You talk to people every day. How could you possibly be shy? I said, well, I put on, you yeah. know, a character. I'm crocking when I'm on yeah. the air. Yeah. When I get out, I'm, no, a li- I, I'm, no, I'm not shy. I'm good. <laughs> you're, you're good. <laughs> uh, 
So, oh, I just had a question. Yeah, I, I lost it there. Oh, what was I going to ask you? Now, see, I'm all I'm all nervous because it's. Oh, I remember. You're, you're, you're so, overwhelmed talking to nature boy. I know it's just unbelievable. I'm sure this happens quite a bit. Uh, growing up, I used to especially the women. <laughs> Growing up, I used to hate Ric Flair. I was a Hulk Hogan guy growing up. When I was like a kid, fifth, sixth grade. Jesus, or fifth, a Hulk Hogan guy. I was a Holy Hulk. And it's funny. My father sent me a text today. and He goes, are you going to tell Ric Flair you were a Hulk Hogan fan? Or are you going to keep that to yourself? Yeah. But I remember as a kid yeah. seeing all the pro wrestling illustrations. And it said, like, yeah. Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, who would win. And then you and Hulkster did that small little run in the WWF at the house shows. Yeah. And the only time. And he won. <laughs> <laughs> and the only time I've seen you or Hulk Hogan was at one of those house shows at the Philadelphia Spectrum. And I tell people all the yeah. time, it was one of the best days of my life. Yeah, I know. We had great chemistry, and uh, it was really easy. He was incredibly over, and the fans loved him. The match was easy, and, uh, you know, it was always fun. We had, a great, we had great chemistry. It was easy. It wasn't like when I had to go to work with a guy like Steamboat or Bret Hartnett, it was, it's not that it wasn't easy. It was just a lot more... Uh, technical and you know just required a lot more a lot more in ring work. Hulk was just so easy. It was like wrestling Kerry Von Erich. It was so over with the crowd that it was you couldn't do anything wrong. So it, it was great. It's 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 amazing too when you bring up a name like Kerry Von Erich. Like when you really mm-hmm. sit back and you think of everywhere you have wrestled, everywhere you have gone. It, it's it's mm-hmm. it's just mind boggling when you think of all the places you've been, all the people you've wrestled. It's just absurd to me well that's what that's what makes me unique there, I, there's nobody i haven't wrestled i mean a lot of the guys never left WWE. a lot of guys never left wcw um i was in japan wrestling bruiser brody and stan hansen and jumbo saruda and tenru and baba and enoki in uh north korea i mean a lot of the guys that you know that, that are considered big time wrestlers ne- never got out of their own le- level of comfort i traveled the world for 20 years and wrestled 365 days a year. So, and I, and I'm not complaining. I enjoyed every minute of it. So the, here's a good question. And it's, it's, a, I, I'm sure it's a secret of yours. If you've listened to any of you remember everything, you're like sharp as a tack. It's unbelievable. You remember dates, yes. you remember names. How do you remember yes. everything? Uh, Cause God gave me a gift. I'm sharp as a tack. I'm still fit. I'm not hurting. I could wrestle tomorrow, but Vince won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you still want to go a little bit? Yeah, I want to go. I think he should open up a double ARP division. I, I'm ready. I always I say that. I'm like, why don't they open like a legends belt up and just you know once a once a month let the legends wrestle? I'd watch it. I think hey, everybody would. Exactly. It was only it's only one of us that can still wrestle. All the other legends are messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have any competition. You'd be at the top. <laughs> Who could touch you? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it is. It's amazing. I listen to all these great podcasts, and you're just you fire things off so quickly. And I'm like, man, I can't yeah. remember what I had for breakfast half the time. And you're just yeah, no, I have a great memory for sports, especially sports. I uh, really like sports trivia, and of course, wrestling is my favorite sport. So trivia about wrestling is uh, just you know, if you think about it, four decades, there's nobody I've missed. The only person, I mean, I, I, it's not that I ever expect to wrestle him, but I, uh, um, you know, Roman and Seth and uh, Dean Ambrose are such great guys. Uh, I got to wrestle Dolph Ziggler a couple times, and all the great guys. And, and just uh, I have so much respect for the, the talent that's on display now. And they work their butts off. They travel hard. And it's, uh, it's still a very tough and sensitive business. It requires a tremendous amount of work ethic. Now, was it always wrestling? Was the plan always wrestling growing up, or was there something a little before wrestling? No, it was, that was the plan. It was, it was, there was no yeah. backup either, yeah. which is making Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I went 13 years of high school. I don't think I had too many options. <laughs> so it was wrestling or that's it. And it's, it's funny because Ricky Steamboat was telling me he was thinking about being a gym teacher and an amateur wrestling coach. And yeah. you, it's just, no, 13, 13 years and that's it. Then he met me. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Now, he seems kind of – you were saying he used to put you on these strict you – know, he had a strict diet. What was it, like no, one he chicken? He me on him. I know I hated him. Jesus, <laughs> three Miller Lights a night and a quarter of Chicken McNuggets? I don't <laughs> think so, man. Yeah, it was like – what was it? It was like a, a, a chicken nugget and a cool beer or whip, something. Yeah, he, well, Steamboat had one of the greatest bodies in the history of our business. I can never take credit for that. 
<laughs> <laughs> I got by, but Steamboat was phenomenal. God, it just so to this day he's he always tries to say I'm not going to have any beers. Then about an hour later, he sits down and starts drinking. He's always giving me this crap. I quit. I quit. Well, that's that's if kind he of gets around me. And he, he, he well, that's another one no of your me. that's another one of your many talents. Is I'm sure that people say, "Ah, oh, I'm good on having a drink." Yeah. And, until they sit down uh, with you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one turns into two. Ask Joe Villa. One turns into two, two into three. Actually, Joe doesn't drink. I don't know how. He smokes 10 cigarettes a day. That's what, <laughs> that's what comes from working for the WWE. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you've talked about I've drinking. I've tried to get Joe out a couple times, and he just walks away. <laughs> Lights went up and goes outside. <laughs> it's, it's great because you hear the guys like me, Gene Okerlin, your buddy Conrad, and they all yeah. say the same thing, like, oh, I'm just going to go out for a drink, and then they complain. And I'm thinking, what do you guys complain about? You're drinking with the Nature Boy. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think me and Gene ever complained or Conrad, okay? <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not responsible for me and Gene having three liver transplants or three <laughs> kidney transplants. Okay, you're a not bit, a little. A little bit of that he brought on himself. <laughs> just, just a little bit of it. You are going to be in town July 23rd, Sands Bethlehem Event Center, a Q and A panel with you and Ricky Stemo. Pretty much every question. Yeah, but hey, I'm not, plus I'm plus I'm bringing Fifi the French maid. Oh wow, that, that costs extra. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm. We're going to play this, and I think people are going to realize how hard it is to get a question on you that hasn't been asked. Yeah, well, bring it on, man. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Rick Flair, we will see you July 23rd. Thank you so much for coming to the show. No, thank you, sir. Very nice to have spoken with you.